By popular demand, in today's video, we're going to look at how to add security cameras to your Apple Home setup using the Homebridge software and a Raspberry Pi single board computer. So as with my previous video about Homebridge, I'll be using Hoobs, which is the Homebridge out of the box setup, rather than installing Homebridge myself. And this is the first in a series of videos I'm going to do focused on how to configure accessories in Hoobs, and I'm doing that series in conjunction with the Hoobs team. If you have specific accessories that you'd like to see covered in this series, then please put a comment below and I'll do my best to cover those. I've put timestamps in the description below so you can get to the section that's most relevant for you, but I do think it's worth watching this one all the way through just to make sure you have a full picture of what's going on and to make sure you don't miss any vital information. To save some time, if you have Nest or if you have Ring, then this configuration won't work. I will be doing separate videos for each of those camera setups. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that in the future and I'll link them up above once they are done. Okay, so let's just talk briefly about what you're gonna need to get started with setting your cameras up inside Apple Home. You will of course need at least one camera and that camera should support either MJPEG or RTSP. If you're not sure what either of those things is or whether your camera supports them, don't worry, we're gonna cover that later in the video. You'll also need Hoobs ring on your Raspberry Pi and you'll need Hoobs at least version 3.1.20. If you're gonna set this up manually, that's fine. I have a video up here that you can watch that shows you how to do that. Alternatively, I've put links down below to where you can buy an SD card that comes pre-installed with Hoobs, or you can buy a full Hoobs box like the one that I'm using here and I use for my videos. This comes pre-installed with Hoobs. You don't need to buy a Raspberry Pi. It has the power supply in the box. It has the ethernet cable in the box. Everything you need is straight in this box. If you're running an older version of Hoobs or you have Homebridge installed yourself, then you will need to install a very specific version of the FFmpeg software. Now the Hoobs team have pre-packaged this so you can install it very, very easily. All you need to do is run this command in your terminal and I'll put that command in the description as well so you can just copy and paste. So those are all the bits that you need. Let's just talk a little bit about how they all stitch together so you get a sense for what we're going to build at the end. So we have our camera or maybe cameras in your case and these cameras make the video and possibly audio streams available over MJPEG or RTSP. The M in MJPEG stands for motion, and really this is just a stream of JPEG images where each frame in the video is one JPEG image. Very, very simple. With MJPEG, you don't get any audio. RTSP stands for real-time streaming protocol, and this allows two devices, in this case the camera and the hoops box, to communicate and exchange video and audio as a stream, so kind of real-time. Now, RTSP doesn't actually encode the video or the audio. For that, you need something else. And Apple Home requires that video is encoded in H.264 and that audio is encoded in AAC. And one of the things we'll be doing in our configuration is setting up hoops to re-encode whatever comes out of your camera into the formats that are needed by Apple Home. Regardless of whether your camera uses MJPEG or RTSP, you will have a URL of some kind that points to the stream, and it's this URL that we're going to give to Hoobs. And one of the things we're gonna do during our setup is find out what that URL actually is. The end result then is that video will flow from your camera into your Hoobs box, get re-encoded as necessary, and then flow out to whatever Apple Home device you're using, your iPhone, your iPad, so forth. Possibly the hardest part about this whole thing is figuring out what URL your camera actually uses for MJPEG or RTSP. Now I'm using the Unify cameras and these actually advertise in the, in the video recorder system what the URL is. So the URL has three important parts. At the beginning here, it has the protocol which will be RTSP for RTSP or it will be HTTP for MJPEG. Then you have the IP address or host name and the port of the camera, or maybe in certain cases, the video recorder that your cameras all go into, like in my setup. And then at the end, you'll have the path which kind of delineates the particular camera or particular stream that you want to watch. If you don't know the IP address for your camera, no worries. The easiest thing to do is to install networks kind of like Angry IP. That works on Windows, it works on Mac, it works on Linux, and then just run this on your machine and then you can scan your cameras. As you can see here, I found that I've got a Unified G3 Pro camera at this particular IP address on my network. If you don't know how to find out the streaming URL of your camera, then if you go to the iSpy Connect camera database, which I'll link in the description below, and you can browse for your particular model. So I'm just gonna browse all the way down here and maybe find this Realtek camera, so click on that. And I can see down here that if I have the Realtek 2200, then it has an MJPEG stream. The protocol is HTTP and the path is this. Obviously the IP address will be whatever IP address you found for your camera. 
Notice also in these uh, paths here that they have like these variables in square brackets where you put username and password. That will be the username and password for your camera. And different camera models will have different variables that you have to add to the URL or to the path to make things work. Once you have the IP address of your camera and you have the path from the iSpy database, then you can stitch the URL together, something like this, and we finally have a URL that we can test and deploy in Hoobs. Now, I mentioned test because I think it really is important to do a test before you actually uh, start configuring this. Now, I use VLC to do my testing. Really simple if you just choose open from network here in the file menu and then paste in the URL that you've constructed, you can have VLC fire up the video stream. Obviously, if you can't get it working in VLC, there's either a problem with your camera or a problem with your URL. Now, while testing in VLC, you can find out some really useful information that will come in quite handy later on. Specifically, if you go into the tools menu and then you choose media information and then you choose codec, take note of which stream is video and which stream is audio. You'll notice that I have audio on stream zero and I have video on stream one. This is the opposite way around to what is expected by default and causes all kinds of problems and we'll need to configure around that. So we're almost ready to start configuring these inside Hoobs. The last thing we need to do is just make sure that we have the camera plugin installed in Hoobs. So come over to your Hoobs, go to the plugin section into search and you're gonna search for camera FFmpeg. And the one you want is this one here. It's published on the 1st of November, 2019 and you can just click install. I've obviously already installed this. So with the camera plugin installed now, we can just go ahead and configure our camera. This is pretty simple. There are a few little pitfalls, but I'm gonna talk you through all of them. So in the plugin section here, click configuration, and you'll see that the name of the plugin is here and the list of cameras is here. If you're not familiar with this config format, this is called JSON, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's really quite simple. These square brackets denote a list of things, these curly braces denote what's called an object, and you can kind of think of this as a key value mapping, and we'll put all of our configuration values inside this object. And you have one of these objects delineated by these curly braces per camera. And if you have more than one camera, you can just put a comma here and then start another one at the bottom. But I've only got one camera so far in this configuration. Then what I want to do is just show you my basic configuration. So you have a key called name, and you can call that whatever you want. So this is the camera at the front of my house. Then you have a key called video config and the casing here is important. So you have to have the capital C for config. And then we have another object and this is the actual configuration object for the video itself. And this is the detail that we care about. Now I've already got the basic config here and I'm gonna talk you line by line through each piece. And I'll also put this in the description below so you can copy it into your own configuration. So the most important one is the source, and this is where we put our URL. So you can see I've got my RTSP URL that I copied over from my Unify configuration before. This is prefixed with dash I. This is to signify this is an input. The dash I is not optional. I've also prefixed this with dash RE. This is optional, but not really. This is a, a value that tells FFmpeg how to read from your camera and it's tuned for real-time streaming. So you'll find if you take this out, it's typically gonna give you choppy video. So I would suggest leaving that in. If your camera has a way of giving you a still image rather than just video, then you can configure that here. And then when you see the thumbnail in the Apple Home app, you're gonna get that a lot faster. Now you don't have to configure this. If you don't do this, what will happen is every 10 seconds, Hoobs will just take a still frame from the video but this is a lot faster, especially if you have a lot of cameras. So check the iSpy camera database to see if you can get a still image source. You can configure the maximum number of streams and what this means if you have multiple people in your house, how many people can watch that camera at the same time. I found that two works for my configuration. You might try more, especially if you have a large family, but honestly, after a while, the machine's gonna start to grind to a halt. So that's a tuning parameter you need to play with. You probably remember from earlier on that the video stream I'm using was in 1024 by 576. So I've configured those values as the max width and max height here. And if you go into VLC and look at that codec information that we saw earlier on, you can also find out what the max FPS is of your video. And I know it's 15 for this video stream. So I've set that here as well. It makes no sense to set any of these values higher than what your camera can supply. But if you're getting choppy video, it does sometimes make sense to set them lower, but there are configuration variables will change before we start to do that. As I scroll down, we have map video and map audio. As you'll remember back to before, we went into VLC, we found out what order the audio and video streams were 
in our video stream and mine were backwards. So this is saying that in output zero, video comes from input stream one and in output zero, audio comes from input stream zero. I want them both to go into the same output stream because I want a mixed video and audio, so that's output zero. But video comes from input stream one and audio comes from input stream zero. Most cameras have them the other way around by default, so you don't need to do this. But I know a lot of you from the comments were struggling with Unify cameras. This is why Unify cameras don't work out of the box. The next line is very, very important. This is the video codec. Remember that Apple Home needs the video in H.264 format and not all cameras will supply that. So we tell FFmpeg to re-encode the video and we tell it to do that using H.264 underscore OMX. Now OMX is a hardware accelerated H.264 encoder for the Raspberry Pi and this is why you need that very specific version of FFmpeg that the Hoops guys have packaged together for you already. If you just use the standard H.264 encoder in FFmpeg, it's so painfully slow that you can really only get like one or two frames per second. This makes a huge difference to the actual output. The final two things I set in the standard configuration are audio to true. Obviously, if you have MJPEG, you can't do that, and debug to true. Now, when you set debug to true, you get a ton of useful output in the uh, logs. In particular, you'll find out when FFmpeg can't actually start. Maybe you've made a configuration error, and it will often tell you like, hey, I don't recognize this configuration variable, or the URL isn't right, or this codec isn't right. So during startup, I recommend leaving that enabled, and then once your cameras are working, set it to false because you get a lot in the logs otherwise. So with the config complete, just click save and that will reboot Hoobs. And the next thing we need to do is add that camera into Apple Home. So here we are in Home and I'm just gonna click the plus icon here, click add accessory. There's no code to scan here, so you just click I don't have a code to scan and then you'll see the accessories that are nearby have popped up and we have front of house here showing. So I'm gonna press on that. Uncertified accessory, okay, we understand that because this is added via Hoobs, click Add Anyway. We need an eight-digit code, and the eight-digit code is this home setup pin that you see here in the Hoobs menu. So we're just gonna type that into Apple Home. 03145154. And that adds the camera. You'll need to do this for every camera you have in your Hoobs configuration. So as an example of how the logs work and also of this configuration working, I've put Hoobs side by side with Apple Home here. Let's just visit the camera and see what happens. So I'm just gonna scroll down here and you can already see that it's doing the snapshotting thing. So it's taking a new snapshot and the video changed to be quite recent. And after 10 seconds, it will refresh the thumbnail. So you see another thumbnail comes in and now that's done. If I click on this now and ring up the stream, it does take a few seconds. This is not as fast as perhaps your camera will be by default, but eventually it will start live streaming. And you can see down here, I've got the live indicator and all of the log is flying by. So it's working, but you can see I've got this frame smearing. And there are reasons why this happens. And I left this in because I wanted to show you what you can do to configure around this. So let's just go back to the configuration and make some changes. So the first tweak we can make is to tell FFmpeg to communicate with the camera in a different way. By default, it does the RTSP streaming over a protocol called UDP, and you can change that to either HTTP or TCP, both of which can offer a better quality frame and often can get rid of that frame smearing. So to do that, we're gonna come into the source here. We're gonna add dash RTSP underscore transport and then either TCP or HTTP, and I know that HTTP works well for my setup. So I'm gonna hit that, click save. This is gonna reboot Ho Hoobs. And then we rebooted, and we'll bring up the logs again. And let's bring up Apple Home again on the side here. Try to do it properly. Go to my camera, click in. If you're familiar with coding, you can see there's a little bit of HTTP flying backwards there. And now we've got a live stream and no frame smearing. Now, it's not the best quality frame at the moment. You can see there's quite a lot of pixelation, but it is working. And obviously, you can see the logs are streaming by there, so we can turn that off when we're happy with this. Now, the next thing we can do is maybe bypass the video encoding altogether. If you go back into VLC, check that codec information again, you might see, like me, that your video is already in H.264 format. So you can just bypass the video coding completely. Let's see how we do that. So back in the config here, and what I'm gonna do is go to video codec, and I'm gonna change this to copy. 
and this is gonna copy the video stream directly through. Now, if your video isn't H.264, this will obviously not work and it will cause all kinds of problems. So you need to make sure that you only do this when your video is already H.264 format. Let's click save. So we're rebooted now with copy in place and I'm gonna click on the camera again. And when it reboots this time and when the live stream starts this time, you'll see that the video quality is infinitely better. There's no pixelation or anything because there's no video encoding happening. This is all just happening straight from the camera to Apple Home. Now you may get this working with audio as well. I haven't got it working with audio, so I, I can't say whether that works or not, but you may want to try that on your camera. If at this point you're still having problems with pixelation or tearing, there's one more thing you can try before you start going for smaller video streams or lower FPS, and that's to change the packet sizes that FFmpeg uses to communicate with your camera. Let's see how to do that. So we're back in the config, I'm gonna add just one more configuration parameter here called packet size, and again, the casing is important there. And this can be any multiple of 188. By default, it's 1316, 1316. If you're gonna start tweaking this, I recommend just starting at 188 and then going up in increments so you get something that works for your network. I know the default works for me, but I also know that this can help other people whose cameras might not work the same way. If after tweaking all of those things, you're still having problems with choppiness or uh, blurriness, then that's the time to start thinking about tweaking the FPS and tweaking the video size. You'll notice that right from the beginning, I started with quite a small video, 1024 by 576. My cameras will output full HD, but even when testing in VLC with just the streaming URL, the full HD was not reliable at all. So I didn't even go with that. That's not even an issue of hoops. That's just an issue of the camera itself. And that's why I do recommend testing your URLs in VLC first, just to make sure that they do actually work. So here we are. That's a custom camera configuration working inside Apple Home using hoops and the Raspberry Pi. It does obviously look a little bit complicated, but honestly, just take it step by step and you will get there. Most cameras will work with a little bit of patience and a little bit of tweaking. And I think I've shown you the bulk of the flags and the configuration variables you need to know to be able to get your camera working. So as I mentioned already, this doesn't work with Nest, this doesn't work with Ring cameras. Videos for those two are coming very, very soon. If there are other accessories you want to hear about, then please do comment below. I am working on a huge series of these videos with the Hoops team, just so you can get the most out of your Apple Home setup and out of the smart home devices you already have. I really hope that you found this video useful and I hope that you found it at least a little bit entertaining. If so, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and don't just hit subscribe, but hit the bell as well so you don't miss out on that forthcoming series of Hoobs-centric videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.